cars are. And one of the things that, that has changed since our original plan is originally we were looking at a truss roof, a wood truss roof system for that facility. Well, the trusses were not installed properly, and, and of course that's what caused the collapse. It was like dominoes falling. However, in the process of shoring that up and engineering studies and whatnot, we're going to have to go to a steel structure roof, and that, and that building is just going to become a facade. So that is, I don't know what that's going to do to our budget. Does the $317,000 leave, does it include, that includes the steel? Okay. Well, it, it, if I may, Mr. Mayor, sure. would it might be for my The $317,000 is the $200,000 we have sitting in the, the bank for the project that's left, plus the settlement check of one seventeen. So, that, so that, I don't that know if it's enough business. to cover it, right. but that's what we have. So, it's, it's, we're here to, to talk about the next steps so that we can get this project rolling. Well, I think probably the first thing we need to find out is how much it's going to cost. Does anybody have a ballpark on the, the steel roof cost or anything like that? Because that's first priority. We can't do anything else inside until we know what that's going to be. I think that would be the first order of business. Yeah, I, I agree because we need to see how much that is and how much is left over to work on the inside. And Steve, do you have other legal discussions you want to have about this? Okay. So, did, did they involve possibly capturing additional revenue? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not very helpful. Or a retractable roof. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the people who are doing the fountain stage are going to come out and help us. Uh, well, can we, uh, before our next meeting, do you think we can get sort of just a, you know, I guess a ballpark number? Of, say, I don't know if we're talking about 50000 or 350000 We've had a couple of discussions about different options. Uh, David had a good idea that some people are doing butler buildings that are on the inside of the brick, brick walls. Uh, it's an old brick building. Yeah, it's just a facade of this. It point. is, and we got to make sure that that thing is safe. There's a couple ways to go about that. Uh, steel structure again. I don't know that we want to do wood. Mm -hmm. We could look at the, the Butler building. Uh, What's the Butler building? Can you explain it, that? Yes. David, you might want to be able to The pre engineered buildings, uh, basically a car dealership or something or a, a barn. I That's what know. you think of. It's Those like look car. ugly, but you can wrap them. And there's a project at Glenwood Park. Most of that's multi-story condos and retail on the bottom, but they did one section where they did a Butler building, that's a brand, Butler yep. building, a pre-engineered okay. building, where basically, like a high school gym, where you have the, these columns that go up and they get wider, and then it goes like that, and it lets you have big clear spans, and okay. it's a lot cheaper to build. It'd be cheaper than a steel roof structure. It should be, I would think. And so at the shed, the, where the shed restaurant is at Glenwood Park, they did a strip of stores, and it's two of the sides, they should have wrapped three, but they wrapped two where the parapet wall goes up. You have no idea, and I can email you all photographs. I took them, I took them because when I was looking, when I wasn't working for the city, I was trying, going to try and develop on Dearborn, and that's what I was going to do on the front. I had that idea after seeing that, and the, the person I talked to at the time uh, ran the numbers both ways, the contractor, and said it could save up to $20 per square foot. So I think it's worth looking at. It's it's an interior system. Everybody pictures the really ugly metal mm -hmm. buildings, but if it's you've got three walls that are hopefully still sound, and if they are, you can set that inside right. and then just build a new front facade. I like place. that concept. That's yeah. a great concept. And the good thing with that is it's it's made for wide span, so you're not going to have columns inside. Right. And when we talked about steel, That's important. when we talked about steel before, we were going to do uh, columns on the edges and then trusses going across, which I would think would be a lot more expensive. And the good thing with this, the systems, it can have the metal roof on it that you won't see because the existing walls would be like parapets. They can have the metal roof that lasts a long, long time and it has the insulation in it. So you've immediately got an insulated roof structure. They can put in insulation that's already black so you don't have to paint the steel where if you did a regular steel structure, you have to paint it. So to me, it was worth at least looking into. Sounds good. Do you think by our next meeting you could have us some ballpark numbers to look at? 
I can call the guy that I was trying to work with before. They they do design build, they design and build it, and he might be able to give me just a rough square footage number. Because I wouldn't think you'd have to manufacture the width. They're going to have something. They probably do it in increments. That if we knew the inside width between the brick walls, that, and that maybe a safety margin to stay off of would give you a good idea to work. Probably take the drawings we've already got laid and use those, so we wouldn't have to. I've got one from Lauren that looked at today. It was 45 feet wide, 60. Anyway, I could send that to okay. them and maybe. I, I, the, that's the starting point, yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Anyway, because at least if you do cost. that, it's to stabilize existing walls. To me, that's the most important thing. Get a roof on it and a new front facade and stabilize those walls, and then you can figure the rest out. But I'm concerned the longer we sit there and the elements are going to yeah. start to do that. And we need to move on this quickly. All right, so that's where we're at. Is everybody in concert on that? No. Do we look at the Butler building concept before we move forward? I think that's correct. Right. Should we look at another concept too? Should we look at the steel trusses? Now you'll have to get somebody to draw on for us. Yeah, I mean, we can get estimates for that too. I was curious, Robert or Lauren, if you worked with other companies that dealt with any kind of uh, building situations that are experienced at that aspect that you could feed something to leave. I, we were very lucky to be the benefit beneficiary of some work from Perkins and Will, and they had engineers, and we're certainly happy to make the outreach. We're certainly happy to drop a note to them and see if we can do that outreach. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other uh, discussion on the five ninety seven? I, you know, I guess people have been coming up and talking about how they want um, to make sure that it stays a theater. And I, and I agree. I want to see the, the stadium seating and that kind of stuff in there um, because it could still be used for multiple different things. You know, you could have music in there. You could have theater in there. You can have so much stuff in. You could show movies. Yeah, there's so much stuff that you can do with a stadium, stadium theater building, so. Can I say one more thing yeah. about that? Let me grab the microphone. Uh, that kind of, that fits into the larger uh, vision is just making sure this building is used all the time when it's done. And one thing we talked about, it's an idea we had, is the existing theater that was going to become the lobby will become the lobby is also making it a music venue, maybe calling it the Opera House, because that's what it used to be a long time ago. So if you have on Friday and Saturday night a play, when that lets out at 10 o'clock, at 10.30 all of a sudden, that gets converted to something like an Eddie's Attic or Smith's Old Bar type thing with you know two top tables and a small stage of red curtains. And then the movies is another thing. I talked to Lauren about this. I was in Asheville this weekend for my uh, uh, not have to think about anything, and then I saw something made me think about uh, here. <laughs> but I was I was driving out. Help yourself. Yeah. They have a beautiful little theater downtown that they see show movies, and I like to go there. But I didn't go this time. But I was driving out the edge of the downtown, and there was a warehouse building right next to the downtown, and had different businesses in it. And somebody had opened. I've got to look it up. I think it's called the Grail Theater, and they took just the warehouse building and made four theaters and the largest one was the size this would be and then they had small ones and they're showing independent art films films made by people in Asheville just all these kind of things and so I went in there and, uh, and it was there were tons of people in there and they were enjoying it so they are creative things we could do like that I, I had lunch with Lauren today to talk about that you know let's make it a movie theater when it's not used for that with things that aren't showing anywhere else that people would come from all over Metro Atlanta so I think that the idea is if we can build this out this way in, in a pretty simple way, it's not that extravagant. There's no raised stage or any of that. It, it is raised seating because that makes it better to view, but that it can be used for a lot of different things at a lot of different times of the day so that you've got different groups of people coming in for the play and then the music venue and going to the corner tavern. Um, so anyway, that's sort of the vision for that, so that fits. Does Ellis Home live in Hapeville? Yes. Know, you know, yes. Ellis, yes. Ellis has one of the largest yeah. private yeah. collections of films. Yeah. Uh, anybody know? Gone with the Wind? 
Yes. Yeah, kind of mad, mad world and something else. Yeah, yeah he's got quite a collection. I mean, this could be every Saturday afternoon, and even if that's free for the ones he does, and people just go to April, and that's something to do. We had also talked about, talked to Michael, that, you know, through the design process, he knows a lot about lighting and things, and hopefully he can be kind of a, a council liaison to kind of help him think through those things also, if y'all are okay. I'm okay with that. It's <laughs> okay with giving you jobs. Yeah, yeah, if you want to take that on, <laughs> might see some more of those goodies. Uh, <laughs> all right, so, so just to clarify, we'll continue to put this on the agenda until we kind of move forward. Crystal eyes, what we yeah, have. because okay. again, um, the situation changed uh, when the collapse happened. You know, we were going about the design one way, and now that that happened, you, you have to think about the stability of the walls and you know what goes back there. So, I, I like the idea of checking out different options to stabilize the situation Absolutely. and then move forward. Uh, and you know, we, we had to have some direction on what you wanted done, right? Because we only have so much money left to you know move move forward. Thank you. I was wondering if you could have some engineers look at it. I don't know. Oh, like if Heck and, well, no, I don't know if like Heck and Woods could look at it and give us a different ideas. I don't like. I don't want just two ideas. I want to see like as many ideas they can come up with that could be cheaper, could be more advantageous to us. Well, uh, based on this conversation, what what I suggest we do is let's go ahead and get the information together. 